So I shall try to speak about fossil insects and uh, the evolution in the past of the fossil insects. We have to keep in mind that uh, the insects, we have, it was said already yesterday, that the insects are very diverse nowadays, with more, more than one million of extant species described, and probably four, three or four, five times more, in fact. And uh, for the fossils, uh, we can see what we can see as a general topic is that the evolution of the insect is, compared to vertebrate, is very curious, very strange, because uh, the extant families are known since the middle or early Cretaceous, so more than one, 100 million years ago, and nearly all the extant order were already there uh, 200 million years ago. So, uh, it is completely different, for example, for, from the mam for the mammals. <coughs> we have two types of fossilization. Uh, first, we have to say that what we know on fossil insects, as for other fossils, is only a very, very small part of what has lived, what was existing in the past. So we make reconstruction, but probably uh, it is completely false. <laughs> or very, very, very uh, fragmentary. So we miss the majority of the fossil taxa that have lived. Uh, but these fossil insects are known in two types of uh, fossils, uh, and they are very frequent, in fact. So we have fossils in amber, or we have fossils as compression in rocks, that is uh, lacustrine sediment, mainly, and the two types can give many information. For instance, you can see here that we can reconstruct the mouth part of, the, of this fossil from the, uh, from the Permian. And in amber, uh, it is very easy to create uh, an outcrop with amber and insects because you just have to have uh, drops of resins going in the, on the floor, going on the ground and uh, transported by water in rivers or in sea, and after it is fossilized. You can, we, we can make, in fact, a cure paleontology with uh, recent resins to see what happened exactly, so that it is rather easy to do. But it is at the first step of these studies, in fact. And uh, these fossils are three dimension, uh, frequently very, very, very well preserved, with details and with electron uh, scanning tomography, we can see even fossil in amber, in piece of amber that are completely opaque, uh, not transparent, and so it increases greatly uh, our knowledge on the fossils fauna, especially for the Cretaceous. Even we can see sometimes the internal structure of the insects, that is the genitalia or thing muscle or thing like this that are preserved. Uh, the problem with amber, it is that uh, it is very recent, in fact, compared to the history of insects. <coughs> we have a fossil amber since the Carboniferous, but without inclusion. The first inclusion are Triassic, late Triassic, 200 million years. And we have the fauna, entomofauna in amber since only the early Cretaceous in Lebanon, and after the Cretaceous and the Cenozoic. In lacustrine, compression are much more frequent. You just need to have a hole to make a lake and to have the sediment preserved after. And you can have quite bigger insects because you have no limits. For amber, you have the, limit, the limits of the size of the piece of resin, in fact. So you have, will find small insects in general in resin. In Paleo Lake, you can find very large animals. So uh, you have more information. But on the other side, the preservation is poorer uh, because the insects are compressed in two dimension instead of three dimension in amber. And you can have also some exceptional case of fossil in gypsum, selenite, or silicification and phosphorite. But since now, these things are, have been very poorly studied, in fact. Uh, in case of phosphorite, you have, uh, we have in France, in the Kersi, we have also in um, Kenya, but uh, in fact, uh, the studies on these fossils are, are very 
preliminary, even they are very old. Some work have been made by ancient in the years 40, but it is only few. Now, uh, we using CT scan, some uh, German, German colleague made, made new, new analysis and found that in phosphorus, the insects are very, very well preserved. So it is very promising, but uh, to be done. And what about the preservation? So, because for to study insects, we need to see very small, very tiny structure. In fact, in amber, the preservation can be very exceptional. You can have sancilla of an, on an antenna of a very small uh, tripida, that is an optera, which is the insect itself is one, one millimeter long, so you can see the size of the sancilla that you can see. Or even in rocks also, in some outcrops, you can, even if they are two dimension, you can see the detailed structure and reconstruct, for instance, the mouth part of the other, this tripida also. The last but not the least, it is the preservation of uh, insect trace of activity, especially on plants. Uh, in many outcrops, there are no insects, but the plants were preserved. So you can see what happened uh, if the trace attack are different. And there have been some important studies made by La Bandeira, for instance, and uh, uh, other uh, colleagues. Uh, to see the change in the, in the trust attack on the, on the plants. So a big, big amount of data uh, that were poorly studied since uh, the last 20 years. In fact, there were only 20 years ago or 25 years ago, there were only about 15 paleoentomologists in, in the world. But now the things have, have changed greatly, and there are plenty of colleagues, uh, neontologists and paleontologists are, are interested in fossil insects nowadays. And so what happened with the story of this group? It is very, very old. The oldest record are Middle Devonian from Rigny in Scotland. Uh, but uh, these fossils have been studied in the years 20, a little restudied recently. There are certainly plenty of material to, to be studied still in the field and in, uh, in London, in the British Museum, but nobody to work on them. So many, plenty of things to do. And even the recent uh, molecular dating uh, makes them going to the very much older, in the Cambrian even which seems to be a little um, surprising because uh, there was no plant on the land, no plant known on the land at this period. Ordovician could be more accurate because we have first plants on the land, but still we don't have fossils of insects. The problem of the first fossil insect from the Devonian is that we have very, very, very few, in fact. We have Scolembola, which are hexapoda, but not really insects. Uh, several species, certainly, from found in Rini, but never revisited, described in the years 20. Uh, maybe a decondylia, that is an insect, a real insect, but only the head with mouth part, and it, has, it was questioned recently by Hogg and Hogg in 2017. And uh, we have a, a possible insect in the Devonian, the late Devonian of Belgium, could be a decondylia without wing, it was questioned, it was debate, it is not very well preserved. So as a result, we have very few things from the Devonian. It is a big, big problem. And what happened? Lay, more, uh, later, we have the wings. When we spoke yesterday about the diversification of insects, the first point that probably was um, drive, has driven the diversification of insects, it was the, the wings. The first winged insects are known from the late carboni earliest late Carboniferous, or latest early Carboniferous, as you, as you want, and they were already very diverse, with predators, uh, with um, saprophagus, with plenty of taxa, but we don't have any insects in the 
early Carboniferous. And we have probably in winged insect in the late Devonian and early Carboniferous, but no fossil at all. No fossil at all, so we don't have the first winged insect. Even if we have some improvement now, we know that the origin of the wing is probably dual, uh, tergal, and notal. So it is a complex structure. It was found using a mailbox gene and fossils, some fossils from the Carboniferous. But we don't know how were made, what was the first wing insect. We still have to find them. And this problem, this lack of fossilization, is a very big challenge now. Uh, so we have a gap. We have the exapod gap in the, carbon, in the early Carboniferous. We don't know exactly. There are some uh, possible things, some possible idea about this. First, lack of research in the field. Not enough people going in the field to search for them. But even when we go to the field in the early Carboniferous outcrops, we don't find insect. We have tried and we don't find. And uh, maybe these insects were living in the, on the soil, in the ground, and animals, insects of, from the soil and the ground fossilize with, um, very rarely, in fact. So it is a, not a very good place for fossilization because it is decomposition. The better place is Paleo Lake, but they have to arrive in the Paleo Lake. And also, these Paleo Lake have been very, very poorly investigated in the late Devonian and uh, early Carboniferous. So where to search and why? That's this big problem. The other question, it is frequently said that the late Carboniferous insect, where it is a period of giant insects, the giant Meganera, uh, 70 centimeter uh, wide, very big animal, something like this, for predators, but also for prey. The Paleodictyoptera, very, very, very big also. But in fact, they were not giant. In fact, the range size of the insect and the medium size was nearly similar as the, for the extant one in the Carboniferous. And even uh, we had very small one. What were the in these insects? The mainly, it were, there were Paleoptera and Polyneoptera, that is, uh, dragonflies, uh, ephemera, and Paleodictyoptera, which is an extinct group with sucking beak, and Polyneoptera, that is the cockroaches and the crickets, something like this. And the other group which that dominate nowadays the diversity of insects were, were very, very, very few, in fact. So, and there were very, very small also. We discovered them very recently in an outcrop, in outcrop from the north of France, and they are not really outcrops, they are all, only the sediments that were removed from the mine, the carbon mine, and we investigate in this, in this uh, rubbish, <laughs> in fact, and find very, very small wings. So we could see that the Paraneoptera, that is the cicada-like insect, and Onometabola, wasp, uh, beetles-like, uh, and uh, uh, Mycoptera-like, things like this, were already there, but there are very few, in fact. And it is very funny because it was said frequently that the Olometaboli, that's a complete change in the development, was a major uh, cause of the diversification of the Olometabolus insects. They constitute nowadays the great majority of the insects. But in fact, these insects from the Carboniferous had a great advantage on the others, but they didn't know. <laughs> they did not diversify greatly. We have to wait for the Permian. Excuse me, yes. We have to wait for the Permian to see a first diversification of the Olometabolus and uh, Acercarian, the, the, the Emipteran insects. Uh, and even it is not complete. And the diversification, the fauna were already, were still dominated by the Paleopteran and Polyneopteran. <coughs> even nowadays when you see it everywhere in the, on the continent, you, have, you find beetles everywhere. They hit everything, you, you find them everywhere. In the Permian, you have still some outcrops, some place with plenty of fossil insects and no beetle at all. 
So they were clearly not nominating at this time. And there are some missing clade, that is the flies, the wasp. Even we, if we have found a stem group wasp in the Carboniferous, and that the wasp are the sister group of all other Lometabola, so they are the, the clade of the wasp of the Immunoptera was probably very ancient, probably going to, into the lower Carboniferous. But we have no wasp and no fly in the Permian. It is maybe a problem of fossilization because the outcrops from the Permian are not so good for fossilization in many cases. And uh, the Permian period was interesting also because it was a period of innovation, of great innovation. Philippe has already spoken about these fossils of uh, mim uh, mimetic with a plant. Previously, previous there were uh, only uh, um, descriptive colors on insects, on prey, in fact. And uh, but this was completely new for the perm uh, at the Permian. So, end of the Permian, 2,045 million years ago, something like this, we have the extinction of the Paleodictoptera. It is a major superclade, superorder that became extinct. But the problem is that this order, in fact, the youngest record of this order is not at the boundary between the, between the Permian and the Triassic, but some million years before. So we don't know, in fact, if the crisis of the major crisis of the main, of the end of Permian was a very a real crisis for the insects, in fact. We still have to investigate because we have a lack of hot crops in the, at the very end of the Permian and the very early of Triassic. There are some hot crops, but there are few taxa inside it. They have been discovered by Russian colleagues in this last year, but still so these fauna are uh, not very diverse uh, and it is still a problem. And in generally, to see the, if we have a, to establish a crisis, we count the species. And for the insect, it was usually this is old one, but the most recent uh, uh, publication on the on the crisis for the insect at, was based on the were based on the same things, the same ID, counting the orders, counting the families, not counting the species because it is nonsense. We don't have enough. Species, the fossil record is not uh, fine enough to go to the species. To go to the species. And the problem is that, for instance, Paleodictoptera, it's uh, monophyletic. Parmotemistida, it's problematic. Megasecoptera also, but they are all Paleodictoptera, so okay. Portortoptera, that was supposed to be a very big group becoming extinct at the end of Permian or so. It is, in fact, a polyphyletic group. And we have the same thing for families from the Permian. Counting the polyphyly groups, it's a problem because you count nothing. And so we tried to make another approach to see if there was an impact on the uh, way of life of the insect at, during this, this crisis. And so we investigate for the mouth part and we, see that we saw that the Permian, the late Permian didn't add anything special uh, only the extinction of Paleodictoptera, but it occurs, the, or, the youngest fossil record is older than the late Permian, than the latest Permian. And it is the same thing which I'll speak again after uh, about the Cretaceous tertiary crisis. So the problem of the crisis with insect is, very, is, very, is still open, in fact. And Triassic is a big change, the first very big change. So we had a big change with appearance of wings. Uh, Triassic Maybe with the extinction of the old groups, ancient groups like Paleodictoptera, there was an opportunity to diversify for the Olometabola, and the Olometabola dominate the environment. You have beetles in all outcrops, and they dominate the diversity. And you have the oldest flies and oldest Hymenoptera. But for oldest fly, they are known from the Triassic of Vosges in France, and they were already very diverse, so they are certainly older. <laughs> and after, after the same tendency go on, the Olometabola diversified greatly. The first Immunoptera that appeared, so that first was recorded of Immunoptera and Diptera and Lepidoptera that are late Triassic, they diversified greatly in the Jurassic. 
So it is only a, deep, a period of great diversification of many, many groups. And the first record of parasitoids, so that is the uh, ichnomon, ichnomonidae, for instance, and the first diversification of parasite insects, parasite on vertebrate, with giant fleas, uh, fleas like this size, with a very, very long beak. Uh, <laughs> <well> <laughs> probably beating dinosaurs, maybe, we don't know. And you have also the diversification of uh, plenty of insects with long mouth part. Mecoptera, Diptera with long tongue, Subsocial Tizonoptera, Lepidoptera, all these insects are supposed to have lived on flowers, eating nectar and uh, pollen. The problem is that we don't have any trace, real trace of angiosperm in the, in the Jurassic. There are some records, but they are questioned. Even if the oldest possible record of angiosperm pollen is late Triassic, but it is still deba debated. So we don't know exactly what these insects with long tongue were eating. Maybe a gymnosperm with pseudo flowers. It was also the period uh, so of diversification of some ancient clade, such as Odonatoptera. The Odonata diversified greatly at this during this period. And after Cretaceous, it was a great change going to the modern world with the diversification of angiosperms that began at, uh, during the early Cretaceous and with the uh, 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 main capital stage, it is at the mid Cretaceous around one, 100 million years ago with the true flowers and this period was the period of diversification of nearly all the modern insect families. Nowadays, uh, with new discovery in Burmese amber and also French amber from the mid Cretaceous, Spanish amber, we know rather well and we discover a, a new world, in fact. It is a Jurassic world, or something like the Cretaceous world, with a tremendous diversity of insects. And uh, we can see that the modern insect family are dated from this period. And also, especially, one crucial thing is that the asocial insects. Uh, termites are dated from latest Jurassic early Cretaceous, hence middle Cretaceous, bees also. But for instance, of course, it is a fossil record. Ants are probably older because we have ants in the mid Cretaceous in France, Spain, Burmese, Amber, Burmese amber was in the middle of the, of the Indian Ocean during this period. So the diversification of this group was probably older, probably late Jurassic. We don't know exactly why this uh, social insect diversified at this time. Of course, we can say, some people have said that termites are much older because they have found some termite nest or termite nest like in the Jurassic or even in the Triassic but it is very complicated to say when you find a structure, if it is a nest or another thing, and who, what animal made, made it? Maybe we had a social insect that were not termite in the Triassic. It is not written on the body of the insect if they are so social. And the same period show a great extinction. So Cretaceous, it was also pollinization and a very important period for us because without bees, we will not be here. The Cretaceous Cenozoic crisis, nothing happened for at the family level, at least, and it is very strange because we have scenario of the Cretaceous crisis that was a big catastrophe, nuclear winter, thing like this, so it is completely abnormal. In the Cenozoic, nothing more or nearly so all the extant family or even genera are there until the, the Eocene or even the Paleocene. Few new fossil families that became extinct after. And the main interest of the Cenozoic insects it is for, for biogeography and the impact of climatic change. Because we had some uh, tropical taxa that were widespread. <coughs> so to finish, fossil insects the history of fossil insects is complicated. 
Many, many things are still known, are still not known, but they are very important for phylogeny, fossil insects. For instance, here we have an analysis showing that the Permopsocida, it is a, a new order we described some years ago, was a sister group of uh, Emiptera and Tripida, that's uh, the bugs, in fact. And uh, we could see the, an intermediate state, stage of mouth part for the insects. So to elucidate some important uh, evolutionary step, it is quite interesting to have fossils, of course. Biogeography, Philippe was saying about, was speaking about the relic. In fact, for instance, Mastrothermitidae, it's a family of termites that is known by one species from Australia nowadays. So it, was, it could be said that it is Australian only, or even Gondwanian, but in fact, when you go in the early Eocene or late Cretaceous, they were everywhere uh, around the world. And this is frequent for many clades that are supposed to be Gondwanian nowadays, and you find them in Europe, in Siberia, in North America, Okay, and for climate, for climate, sometimes some time fossil insects can be can be used, but it is understudied nowadays because it is complicated to see on the fossils uh, its climate um, way of condition. For instance, you have to an, have an animal that belongs to an extant genus, for instance. And next we need to integrate the fossil in phylogeny. And to make this, we need to make homology of wing venation. And that is, will be the last thing. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Thank you.